So let's think of this morning, saints. Let's all be partakers with the men today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will have our men give us scripture and prayer, and following will be our praise and worship. Amen. about Jesus Christ, Lord, that we become a better person in the eyes of you, Lord, that we might reach out and love one another, to be a better person, to be better in our community, to be better in our household, Lord. And, oh, Lord, we pray for the young people, Lord. We look at, Lord, we see it's troubling times everywhere we look, Lord. But, Lord, we pray, oh, Lord, that you have your angels, Lord, to still comfort us. Put your arms around us, Lord, while we travel the highways and byways, Lord. When we go to the stores and everything, Lord, we just kneel down, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that we know you're going to watch over us. Lord, we know we already have the victory, Lord. And we, as the sun is rising, Lord, we can still get up and keep going, Lord, and just be a better person. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You know what? On the program, it calls for praise and worship, then the, then the welcome. But you know what? I'm going to switch around just a little bit because I am supposed to give the welcome. So I'm going to give it right now. Is, it, is there anybody here visiting for the first time? If so, please stand. Anybody? Okay, so we all at home, right? Amen. Well, I welcome you, and I'm glad that you, you're here with us today. And we're going to start our praise and worship. Hallelujah. Like Sean said when he first got up, this is the day that the Lord has made. Lord has made that the Lord has. 
I will rejoice, rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Everybody, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will, I will rejoice. Rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Day that the Lord has made. I will enter, will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. So glad you're here. Good morning, Jesus. You're welcome here. Welcome here. There goes my bird. There goes my bird. There goes my fear. Good morning, Jesus. So glad you're Good morning, Je Good morning, Jesus. So glad you're here. Good morning, Jesus. You're welcome here. There goes, there goes my burden. There goes my fear. Good morning, Jesus. So glad you're here. He is the king. He is the king. Of King, he is the Lord, the Lord of Lord. His name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He is, he is the King of King. He is the King, he is the King. Of King, he is the Lord of Lord. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Uh, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, we serve. Angels, angels bow before him, and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God. Angels bow before, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan will have to get out of here, devil. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say. Tell me who can stand. Tell me who can stand for us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. We serve angel bow. Mighty God, we serve. He is the king. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord, the Lord of Lords. Oh, his name is Jesus. 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 
so glad that he's my alpha and he's my omega. He's my beginning and he's my end. Now just stop and think about that. Think about that. that, that, that he's, he's the alpha and omega and that dash in between too. You know I've been to funerals and they, they, put, they put on a, uh, they put on a uh, funeral and I heard lots of preachers uh, talk about this where they put that Born this day, dash, died that day. It's that dash in between accounts. And God being everything. Hallelujah. You sing with me. You are Alpha. Let's sing it again. Tony, I want you to cut it. Start us off and cut it. You are Alpha and Omega. Come on, y'all! We worship Let's do that again. Let's do that again. You are Be 
Hallelujah. 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 We give him all the glory, all the praise, because we worship him. He is the Alpha and Omega. And as we begin our congregational song of, oh, how I love Jesus. And we love him because he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. So let us, as we look to the board, oh, our congregational song, him, oh, how I love Jesus. Let's sing that, saints. Good morning, good morning, New Revelation. Join us in singing our uh, congregational song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. There is a name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me. Oh, how I love him. 
because he first loved me. One more time. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first. One more time. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I, oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. program calls for altar prayer. If you'd like to make your way to the altar for prayer, bring your families, grab somebody, and come to the altar for prayer. After those, that all that praise, there ought to be some deliverance in the room. We're praying for our pastor. We're praying for those that listen by screaming. Somebody all that leave here different. You came in burdened. Death angel took one of your loved ones. Trouble at home. Children, grandchildren ain't acting right. Old husband being contrary. Could be the wife being contrary. But if we meet at the altar... Go on our knees, fast, and pray. It ought to be some change in here. Some of us came in on Jesus' will right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Somebody need deliverance. Somebody got a hurting heart. But God, you're more than able to settle their deliverance. A mother don't know how she going to feed her children. But God, you're more than able. You made a way out of no way for us. And we pray for these children, families, caregivers. Every pastor, leaders, churches. Lord, have mercy right now in the name of Jesus. Let them leave different then they came. Maybe they're going through in the body, but God, you're more than able. It's deliverance at the house of God. And then we pray for our pastor, our leader for the word of God that goes forth in this place. Keep him from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bless his family, Lord. Bless every auxiliary of the church. Bless the prayer warriors. Oh, in the name of Jesus, touch now, deliver now, save, set free in the name of Jesus. Somebody want to give up on the church, but renew, let them have a renewing of the mind. And we just say, have mercy, Lord. We don't know where the trouble is. We don't have all the answers, but we just say, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Whatever the problem is, have mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For those that we left at home, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Now, God, as we go forth in the furtherance of this service, bless the song, bless the singers. Let somebody come out of that zone and give you a high praise. Because you, uh, your mercy allowed us and your grace to make it to church one more time. We don't take it for granted. But by your grace and your mercy, Lord, 
We just give you honor, glory, and praise in the name of Jesus. Bless now in Jesus' name. Bless now. Somebody need a blessing. Somebody want to give up. Somebody that have a mental problem. But God, you able. Set a deliverance. Let them leave. Let them give you a high praise. And if we believe it, we say hallelujah. As we return to our seats, Lord, we give you honor, glory, and praise that you allowed us to come to church one more time. Have mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen.
to be a comedian. I want to be a comedian. I want to be a comedian. When all things get hard, after separation of the right and the wrong, I want to be a comedian. Around the throne. Oh, yeah. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. We all send you home. After separation of the rock. After separating all the right and the wrong, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching home. Troubles will be over, sorrow will be gone. Then we can have that meeting around the throne. Oh, yeah. I want to be at the meeting. Yeah. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. With Get to dirty. I walk dirty like a man. I buckle my sword off my side and stick it in the golden sand. I'm gonna talk to God the Father. I'll talk to God the Son. Then we can have a meeting. Around the throne. Oh, when I to heaven, I'll meet my mother there. She'll say, good God Almighty, here comes my son. I know he must have made it by prayer. We'll be at home and we'll sing a brand new song. Then we can have that meeting around the throne. Oh, yeah. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. Oh, yeah. After the separation of the heart and the world. I get to heaven, I'll meet my mother there. She'll say, good God Almighty, here comes my son. I know he must have made it by prayer. We'll be at home and we'll sing a brand new song. 
Then we will shout troubles over around the song. Oh, yeah. Amen. Anybody want to be at the meeting? Hallelujah. Give these men a hand. Give them a hand. You got to shake the devil off. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't shake the devil off, you won't be at the meeting. I wish somebody really understand that. Look at your other neighbor. They didn't get excited. Say, other neighbor, I need you to hear me. If you don't shake the devil off, you won't be at the meeting. Because how many of you know the Bible said, none but the righteous shall see God. And I don't know about you, but one of these old days, I know my time will be over down here. And like the old song said, I want to be at that great coronation. In the middle of the air, where there's no more dying, no more crying, no more sickness, troubles, heartache, and pain, it'll soon be over. Yeah! Is there anybody that can get excited? That one of these old days, I know some of y'all are too young now. I know you haven't been through that much. And you say, I'm not ready to go. But is there anybody in the house I don't know when I'm going to go, but I, one thing I do know is that I'm ready. I'm ready. When my time comes, let's put our hands together one more time. And give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, men, for reminding us. You know, when we come to worship, some of you hear me say that we give our tangible gifts because of the spiritual grace that God has blessed us with. Choir, they, what they did was they reminded us that we have to shake the devil off. Because some of you got hell in you right now. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Some of you came in with the devil on your mind. And that's why the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Do I have at least five honest people that said you came in here and the devil has been trying to bother you, discourage you, 
That's why you got to learn how to shake them off. Somebody say, how do I shake them off? I shake them off with praise. Amen. Because when you start clapping your hands, you confuse the devil. How are they praising God? When they got problems on every side, how are they waving their hands? When the bills are due, how are they waving their hands and stomping their feet? When the doctor just diagnosed them, see what you do is you confuse the enemy. You're letting the enemy know it's not about what I'm going through. It's about what I'm going to. And is there anybody in the house that says I may not be healed right now? I may not have all the money I want right now. My family may not be in the order that I want it to be, but I don't have to wait till the battle is over. But I can shout right now. Say yeah. If you can shout in the devil's face, if you can say devil, you thought you had me. You thought you were going to depress me. You thought you were going to defeat me. But I got something to say to the devil. Come a little closer. Guess what I'm going to say to the devil? Nah, 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 nah. I will not be depressed. I will not be defeated. Because after all I've been through, I still have my joy. Shout yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Excuse me, y'all. I didn't mean to feel like this. But every now and then, my soul gets excited. Because when I begin to think on the goodness of the Lord, after all I've been through, I didn't think I was going to make it. But guess what? I still have my joy. I'm still standing. Say yeah! Ah, 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 yeah! Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Give him a hand clap of praise if you don't mind. For God is truly worthy to be praised. Thank God for all of our visitors who have joined us today. Uh, we're not crazy. We're just excited. <laughs> we act like this because we have joy. You know, yesterday I saw the Philadelphia fans of the Philadelphia Eagles celebrating because their team won. I saw Kansas City fans celebrating because their team won. The reason why we celebrate like this because over 2,000 years ago, I joined a team that won. And I don't know about you. Every time I think about that I'm on a winning team, I got to celebrate. I, I, I come to the place, Sister Penella. I don't need nobody else to celebrate for me. Because when I think of what, what Jesus did, when he died on that cross for me, he did it just for me. And you got to make it up in your mind that he did it just for you. And when you make that up in your mind, and I make that up in my mind, and your neighbor make that up in their mind, guess what? There'll be a celebration because I realize that where I am, I don't have to be. And I'm grateful for his presence. Hallelujah in my life. So that's why we celebrate. Because we know we're on the winning team. Depression will not have me. I, a discouragement will not have me. Lack will not have me. Because I'm on the winning. If you're on a winning team, put your hands together. Thank God for our visitors, those who are tuned in by way of social media. We're glad to have your virtual presence on today. We praise God for you, you, and you. 
thank God for all that has taken place thus far. I came here and when I, as I grow in my relationship with the Lord, Carmelita, I come to worship looking for something. Not only am I looking for something, I'm also willing to offer something. And because I'm willing to offer something, I'll receive something. And I pray, I don't know what part of the worship experience will touch you on today, but I pray that something has touched you so far that will keep you encouraged in the Lord. Let us turn to our scripture for today. You'll see it on the screen. Thank God for our preachers and our deacons and our men who led us in worship. Every fourth Sunday is Men's Sunday. And you all know, I know, I'm just grateful that we have some men at this church that are still willing to worship. Anybody grateful for worshiping men that don't mind? Thank you, Bernie, and those that share in leading our men and worship Brother McDade, who is our uh, layman's president, amen, and all those that worship. There's nothing like men that God is still looking for men that are willing to worship. I know some of us say it don't take all of that, but God is still looking for men. He used men. And so it's good that we have a day dedicated for the men to express them, not just the deacons, but men throughout the congregation. We had Brother Hill to read the scripture. Amen. Men are worshipers. And so I'm grateful for that. Amen. But today we'll look at the fifth chapter of Luke coming from the Christian Standard Bible. Starting at verse number five, it reads like this. Master, Simon replied, we've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they did this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners. Anybody got some partners? In the other boats to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me. Because I am a sinful man, Lord. For he and all those with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were Simon's partners. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Simon. From now on, you will be catching people. Then they brought the boats to land. Watch this. Left everything and followed him. Amen. I want to share from this thought today. Direction after disappointment. Direction after disappointment. I realize that life can be disappointing. Some of us in here are sitting here. You came to church because something disappointed you this week. And you came here looking for a word to help you make it through your disappointment. Well, I'm glad you showed up today. Because there is a word that will help direct us after disappointment. Life is disappointing, I believe, because of failure to experience what we expect. Our expectation was based upon either what we thought somebody would do or what they said. They, I wish I had some witnesses in the house. They would do. And when they didn't come through, when they didn't show up, like you thought they would show up. Some of y'all had some friends that said, I'll be there with you all the time. Just to find out when you found yourself in different issues and problems, some trouble, you tried to call them, and it seemed like they put you on block. 
And then they lie and tell you my phone was turned off. I wish I had some real people in the house. Disappointed because of what we thought should happen or what people said should happen and they did not follow through. Now, the first one is based upon us because nobody told us to think certain things. It was our own understanding. We talked about that last week. We have to stop leaning to our own understanding and we have to learn how to have the conversation in order for truth and trust to be established. And I, I understand that's what's wrong with some people in the church today. Y'all roll with me for a few minutes. They come to church thinking that God is supposed to bless me just because I show up. You're not in a relationship. We talked about that last week, a part-time lover. But you want experience the hand of God, but you really don't want the heart of God. Oh, I wish somebody understand. And so therefore, we're disappointed because of what we think and because of what people said God would do and how he would do it. And I misunderstand the Bible. But then there are some people that told us that they would be there for us. They would help us. They would love us. They would encourage us. They would motivate us. And when they did not do it, guess what? We became disappointed. And sometimes the effects of disappointed, disappointment can leave you isolated. You don't want to deal with nobody. Can't trust anybody anymore. Therefore, you begin to trust yourself which is the biggest mistake because sometimes some of us are the most inconsistent person we know. I wish I had somebody in the house <laughs> because we're fickle. We're up today. Can't trust our decisions. Can't trust our thoughts. Can't trust our way. And the Bible does validate that. It said there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. So therefore trusting myself is not a good thing because I thought I trusted myself, but when I made a decision that led me down a path of destruction, then I was disappointed even with myself. Do I have anybody in the house sincerely that you made some bad decisions and that you were so disappointed in your, why in the heck did I do that again? I said I wasn't going. I wish I had some real folk. I'm disappointed with myself. Then I isolate myself. The effects of disappointment. Watch this. Can isolate us. But the real thing that we need is some direction. After the disappointment. And so therefore when I turn my attention to these experienced, y'all listen to the verbiage, these experienced Velda fishermen who encountered disappointment after an unsuccessful night at fishing. What happened is they went fishing one night. Experienced men that know what it is to fish. I don't know about you, but I, I go fishing. I love fishing. And there are times when I go fishing with my father and I've gone fishing and I, I wanted to go somewhere where I knew I was going to catch fish. I didn't want to go just playing in the water. Am I right, Ronnie? Amen. I, I, I want to know that I'm going to catch some fish. Sometimes when I'm fishing and I don't catch nothing, Anthony, I, I get happy if a dogfish get on there. Some of y'all don't know what that is. A grinner, Amen. Just so I can have a fight with the fish. I want to catch some fish, Brother Coley. But these men who were experienced fishermen, they went fishing at night. And they caught no fish, Kanisha, because night fishing was common. Fish at night in that time, and maybe even true to the day, uh, fish were more active at night. And Ronnie, then they started feeding closer to the surface. They didn't use fishing poles like we did. They had nets. So they didn't have to throw that net out as far as Sister Mitchell. And, and, and as the sun rose and set higher, watch this, the fish would go out into the deep. So they would not need any net 
the net would be useless if it went out in the deep. It's only useful around, y'all rolling with me, I'm trying to set the average. Around the surface, around the bank, so they can at night. But but look at what happened; they were unsuccessful. And Luke has us, the writer of this, he wants us to understand that Jesus is the perfect man. Jesus is the perfect man, and we'll see how people stopped looking at him just as a man and recognized him as the Lord of man. I wish somebody understand me. Because Jesus is in control of all elements. Because the Bible teaches us that the world was made by him. Amen. So the world was made and therefore the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. But watch this. After fishing all night long, after toiling all night long, can't you see these tired, weary fishermen? Fishing can be tiresome. I'm telling you, it can be tiresome. Toiling all night long. Washing their nets on the banks. And the Bible says that Jesus told them, I know you've been fishing all night long. But what I want you to do after the crowd had gathered around Jesus. I have to admit you all, I preached this text several times, but I only focus, watch this, on verses 1 through 7. But this time, Brother Glenn, the Lord, had me to focus a little bit further on the other verses. Because they had been toiling and all of us experienced disappointment. All of us want to see the fruits of our labor. Somebody has started a business. Amen. Somebody has tried to go to school and it seems like you got a disappointing grade or the business did not flourish like you thought or you wrote a book like me and it didn't happen and come out like you wanted it to come out. Somebody has dealt with disappointment. Thought that the person that you said I do to would say, I do, until death did you part. But find out death came early. Not physical death. I wish I had somebody in the house that understand. But we separated. That's death. death. There's nothing but separation. Disappointed because of decisions. And Jesus came along after the crowd had gathered around him. Y'all were ready. Anytime you have something to offer, you will have a crowd. Jesus asked Peter, go home and read it. Can't I use your boat? And Jesus took his boat and made it a pulpit. And he started teaching the crowd. And the crowd became astonished at his teaching. But then he gives Peter some direction. Watch this. He's washing his net. They're on the shore. He said, Peter, launch out into the deep. Now, if y'all were just paying attention to me, the nets did no, were no uh, use in the deep water. They said, Lord, we've been fishing all night long, and we caught nothing. And you're going to tell me to launch out into the deep? Can't y'all see him? I wish y'all had imagination like me. Peter probably was thinking to himself, you're a carpenter. I'm the fisherman. I know something. I'm an experienced fisherman. I know something about fishing. I'm accustomed to this sea. And you going to tell me? I'm just saying this is what he's saying to himself. To launch out into the deep. And we find ourselves here at verse 5. Y'all roll with me. Amen. Uh, and Peter says it like this. At your word I will launch out into the deep. Because you said so, Priest Turner. We have to come to a point the first direction that he got is don't let failure defeat your faith. Amen somebody. Don't let failure defeat your faith. 
Most of us, after disappointment, we won't rest. Just say it. We don't want to deal with nobody. Frustrated with people. Frustrated with ourselves. We want to rest from everybody. Isolate ourselves from everybody. We want to sit down and say, let me figure this thing out. Let me see. But we need some direction. And you cannot let failure defeat your faith. Look at what Peter says. I will do so after he got some direction because you said so. Amen, somebody. We cannot rest in ourselves, but we have to learn how to rest in the word of God. Rest suggests peace. I wish somebody had to stand. That's why the Bible said, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me, amen, somebody. Peter, he's talking to Peter. Peter says, okay, Lord, I will rest in your word. Even though I've been toiling all night long. Even though I've been casting net. Even though, Lord, I'm tired. Anybody ever got tired in life? Wanted to just rest somewhere? But then you found yourself resting in the word of God. There's peace in the word of God. The Bible says it like this in Romans 10 and 17. It says, guess what? Faith comes by hearing. And watch this. Hearing by the word of, he heard the word. Amen, somebody. Of God. And he said, even though I'm tired. Watch this. I, I'll, I'll get my stuff back together. Put my net back in the boat. And I'll do what you said do. Let me tell you something. It, you, you will always experience success. Listen to what I'm saying. Always experience success. When and the manifestation of God. When lo, the Lagos gives a rhema. The Lagos is Jesus. He is the living word. And what Jesus does is gives a rhema word. A rhema word is a right now. I wish somebody understood. Is a right now word. The Lagos gave Peter a rhema. Lord Jesus said, Peter, launch out into the deep. And Peter responded, you have to learn how to rest in the word of God. That's why James tells us, he said, don't just be hearers. But be do it may not make sense to you. I wish I had somebody. It may not make sense to you. But you got to learn how to listen to what the Lord said. It did not make sense to me. Y'all heard it a million times now. When the Lord told me to leave U.S. Steel. Had 10 years in the mill. Vested in the mill. And I heard the Lord said, don't go back. Do you worry? It didn't make sense. I tried to call my mother. Veiled, I even tried to call you to make sense of this. Lord, why would you tell me to leave my livelihood? People make money at the meal. I have children. Somebody need to hear this again. Amen. It didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. People call me crazy. And guess what? People said that boy's crazy. Ain't no God told him to leave that meal. He got people. People will talk about you. Say you're crazy, but you got to know what the Lord said to you. Guess what? It wasn't for everybody else. It was my rhema word. Even called the lady in human resources, Sister Linda Wood, and said, Sister Woods, the Lord told me not to come back. I don't know what I should do. I got 10 years. I know I'm vested. She said, maybe he said in two weeks. I said, no. He said, now. She said, Reverend Turner, you've always been a preacher of faith. She said, now the Lord is testing you to see if you're going to trust him. When God gives you a rhema, guess what? It's for you. People may not understand it, amen, but it is for you. So guess what? You have to learn how to rest. Don't let your failure defeat your faith. 
The next thing it says right there in verse number eight. Y'all need to roll with me through here. Put, put that scripture, if you can, uh, verse number eight back up. And look at what it says. I want them to see it as well, if you can do it. But if not, it says, when Simon Peter saw this, watch this. He fell. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me because I am a sinful man. Because Peter was obedient. In verse 6 and 7, the Bible said they caught so many fish. I told you Jesus always goes against the odds. I shared with you already that a net was not useful in deep water. But in this time, isn't it good to know that the God that you serve always goes against the grain of tradition? I wish somebody understand. The Bible said they caught so many fish that the nets began to had to call some of his partners in order to share in the blessing. Amen, somebody. And therefore, now at verse number eight, because he did not let his failure or disappointment defeat his faith, the Bible says that they were blessed, right? Verse number eight, I need y'all to hear with me. Verse number eight said, when Peter saw this, he experienced the manifestation of the revelation, God revealed to him something that he did know, not know anything about. Even though he was an experienced fisherman, after he saw this uh, manifestation, he said, go away from me because I am a sinful man. The next thing I want to tell you is direction that you get is don't discount the value of an influential leader. Amen, somebody. Don't discount the value of an influential or inspirational spiritual leader in your life. Because of his disappointment, he listened, roll with me, y'all, to his leader. We've been talking about that for the last few weeks. Remember, they were building a bigger building, and they said, we want you to go with us to Elisha. Remember a couple weeks ago. Don't discount the value of an influential leader. I need to stay here for a few seconds to help people understand. Just because a person can move people, they are influential, but they are influential by manipulation. We have a lot of manipulating leaders. They manipulate people in thinking that if they fast and they save their money and you believe God for a blessing and you don't get the blessing, just give it to the church. That's manipulation. All day long. And there are some people who have been manipulated by spiritual leaders. They are charged with spiritual abuse in the presence of God. And they have to answer for that manipulation. But a spiritual leader will always lead you into the presence of God. Some of y'all confused. Y'all stuck on that point. Amen. So don't get it confused. We can talk about that at Bible study. There's a difference between Influential and manipulation. Number two, they had reverence for their, they had respect. He had respect for what Jesus said because he trusted him. Amen, somebody. Don't discount the value of an influential leader. Preach turn. Now, right here, watch this. He said, Lord, get away from me. It sounds like Isaiah. I need to say this. Remember in Isaiah 6, go on and read it. You'll see Isaiah says, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I also saw who? The Lord. He was high and lifted up. Go on and read it. When he saw and he was in the presence of God, in the presence of the Lord, he said this. He said, oh, woe is me. I am a sinful man. 
When you stand in the presence of a holy God, you have to express your unworthiness. That's why when the king and his presence shows up in this place, I have to subject myself. Because I know I'm unworthy. And I have to bow in humble submission. Amen. To, I wish somebody understood. He said, I'm a sinful man. And look at what Peter says. The same thing. Because if you go and read verse 5, he acknowledged him as the Messiah, Dana. He said, you're the Messiah. But he moved from him being the Messiah, and he repositioned him as Lord of his life. I really wish some of us could stop looking at Jesus as just going to bless me with a car or a house. But when you make him Lord of your life, that means he's your master. That means I am subject. Lord, have mercy. I'm a worshiper. That's why he says I'm looking for true worshiper. Those who will follow my command. Preach turn. We'll deal with that later. So Peter acknowledged him for who he is. Is Jesus really the Lord of your life? Is you're just looking at him as the one that saved me from my sin? But is he really the Lord of your life? Does his spirit lead you and guide you? That's why that old song said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains to bear. All because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing us back to my remembrance. Guess what? I want to show all y'all deep saints. This is just for the deep saints, I know. Guess what? Peter, Sister Mitchell, never asked him for his help. Peter didn't pray for it. Peter didn't fast for it. But because Peter, watch this, had already said before now, I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to walk by faith. Because this is not the first time. Remember, before Jesus really came on the scene, they were fishing by the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus said, follow me. And they just started following him. I wish somebody understand. They walk by faith. And not by sight. And the only thing I'm trying to tell somebody, when you decide to follow Jesus, there's some stuff that you don't even have to ask for. You will just experience the manifestation. I wish somebody understand because I'm walking by faith. I wish somebody had some soldiers in the house that have learned how to walk by faith. I know in my life, Sister Panella, there are some things that I experienced that I did not pray for. But because I'm just a child of God, the Lord allowed me to experience an exceedingly and abundantly blessing. Is there anybody in the house that ever had an exceeding and abundant blessing? Because you walk by faith. Amen, somebody. you got to learn how to acknowledge God for who he is. Don't discount the value of an influential and a spiritual leader. The next thing I want to show you is don't focus on the material blessing, but the spiritual lesson. Somebody missing what I'm saying. I wish somebody understood me. Don't focus just on the material blessing. Too many of us i looking at the material stuff. Look at what Peter did. All those fish. Been fishing all night long. Y'all follow me. Amen, somebody. But Jesus said, now I'm going to give you a revelation. Watch this. I, I gave you the manifestation first. Now I'm going to give you a revelation. He said, don't just look at the fish. He said, now you're going to catch people. Oh, I wish I had somebody in the house. That understand. See, some of us just look at the material blessing and not the spiritual lesson. And the spiritual lesson is, is that because you're my disciple, he said, I'm going to make you fisher of, I wish somebody understand. And as long as you have my presence, you're going to crush a great number of people. Lord, have mercy. People are going to come to know me because I'm going to use you as the bait. 
Somebody missing what I'm saying. See, in order to catch fish, you got to have the right bait. And the Lord is telling all of us that you're going to be the bait that's going to use to catch the fish for I understand me. Is there anybody? I know y'all can't get excited because people have denied y'all. They looked at you and turned away. But is there anybody in the house say, Lord, I want you to use me as the bait in order to catch some more fish. Hallelujah in the house. But too many of us look at the material blessing. We sing all these songs, miracles, signs, wonders are over my. We looking at the material stuff. But we're not looking at the spiritual lesson. Each and every one of us, he wants to use us as the He said, you're going to catch people. Stop looking at the material stuff. That's why some of you are disappointed with church. Those of you listening to me out there in virtual land, stop looking at the material blessing. That's why the Lord said, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and all these things, I feel like preaching now, shall be added unto you. He said, look at the lilies of the field. Look at the birds of the air. They don't take no thought about how they'll be taken care of. I wish I had some people that can grow in their faith that I'm going to stop praying for some food. I'm going to just get up and walk by faith knowing that somebody going to bless me. I ain't got to pray for no clothes, amen, another car, another job, amen, because I know because I'm a seeker of the Lord. God has provided for me already. I just got to keep walking by faith and not by sight, amen, somebody. Is there anybody in the house that know I'm going to look at the spiritual lesson? If I never get another car, if I never get another wife, if I never get another job, if I never get another nothing, I got somebody that you can't take away. You can't repossess it. You can't put it in foreclosure. That's what's something wrong with some of y'all now. Your faith is in foreclosure. But is there anybody in the house know that my faith is not in foreclosure, but I am I am a conqueror. All because I got a revelation. All because he showed me who I really was. And I know who I really am. Because I reverence him for who he really is. He is the Lord of my life. I'm through now, y'all, but Look at the last verse. The Bible said uh, that so, watch this, uh, uh, Peter, uh, James, and John, Zebedee's sons, who were Simon's partner, they said, don't be afraid. Jesus told them, from now on, you will be catching people. Then look at verse number 11. It said, then they brought the boats to land, left everything, and uh, they began to follow him. So the question is, are you willing to leave what you know? They were experienced fishermen. They knew something about fishing. But the Bible says, Bernie, when they got on the shore, they left their boat. They left everything. And they were willing uh, to follow Jesus. And the question for all of us is, are you willing uh, to leave what you know and follow someone that can help you grow? Is there anybody in the house know that that is my reward? It's not the material blessing. It wasn't the great catch of fish, but their reward was following Jesus. Because when you follow him, you need to grow in the Lord. Is there anybody that really know that I wrote a reward? It's not the material blessing. I get a reward all because I had a revelation. All because I reverence who he was all because I rested in his word is there anybody in the house are you willing to leave your priorities for his presence I know you got a lot of stuff going on in your life I know you've been blessed with a whole lot of stuff but will you leave your priorities and 
follow after his presence. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I'm through now, y'all. Come here, Abraham. Y'all remember when Abraham finally had a child and the Lord had blessed him in his old age. And one day, Brother Hurston, the Lord said unto Abraham in some words like this, can you bless me with what I bless you with? Can you offer your only son back unto me? Ain't God all right? Yes, he is. Can't y'all see Abraham in the 22nd chapter of Genesis? One of his servants took him to the hill. His son Isaac said, Lord, I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? And the Bible said once they got to the place of sacrifice, Abraham said, I know I love my boy. I know I love my son. But I'm willing. Oh, I'm willing to bless you with what you bless me with. He laid the boy on the altar. He had the knife in his hand. He was ready to kill the boy. But I'm so glad he heard a voice said, wait a minute. You don't have to kill him. There's a ram in the thickets and won't God God will test your faith to see if you're willing to follow his presence and give up your priorities. Say yes. Say yes. God don't require all of us to give up everything. He's not saying to all of us, you got to give up everything. But the question is, are you willing to make yourself and your stuff available to him for his purpose? Are you willing that the Lord can use your life? I know you're a liar, but he can use your lying tongue and cause truth to come out of your mouth. I know you're being reckless with your life, but how many of you know that God could turn you around and pay you in a new direction. Say yeah. Say yes. I'm going back to Isaiah. Y'all remember Isaiah said, I'm a wretch undone. I dwell in the midst of a people that's unclean. I'm unclean. And the Bible said that one of the angels in the sixth chapter of Isaiah took the coal from the altar and placed it on his tongue and he was clean once he was clean Deacon McGee he was walking one day and the Bible said I hear somebody saying something Isaiah said I heard a voice saying whom will I send who will go for us and Isaiah said here am I, send me, I'll go. Is there anybody in the house that says it like that? Here I am, use my mouth, use my hands, use my feet. Here am I, Lord, you can use me. I'll sing for you, I'll dance for you, I'll count money for you, I'll clean up for you, wherever I go. I'm I'm going to get my reward. Say yeah. Yeah. I'm through now, y'all. But turn to that next slide. I want to give y'all a little bit of motivation. This is when Jesus says to the disciple, do not fear those that can kill your body, but are not able to kill your soul. Rather, 
feel fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell keep on going aren't two sparrows so forfeited yet none of them falls to the ground without the father's consent look at what it said but the hairs on your head should not be counted it's Mark, excuse me, y'all. See, the devil is trying to get busy, but he don't want me to give you this word. The Bible says in Mark 28, excuse me, y'all. He said, truly, I tell you in verse 29 that there is no one who has left their house their brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more at this time they'll receive houses brothers sisters mothers children and fields with persecution and guess what not only the material but then there's a spiritual blessing you shall receive eternal life say yes I'm glad about the material stuff but at the end of the day I just want my mansion in the sky say yeah oh yeah I want to see I want to see Jesus the man that died for me I want to see the man that set me free thank you brother Hurston one of these old days I'm going to see my mama again and there's going to be a great meeting in the middle of the air. Say yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those are your directions. After disappointment. Take rest, reverence the Lord, get a revelation, and then you will receive your just reward. Is there anybody in the house that's glad that I don't have to stay in disappointment? But one of these old days, I'm going to my destiny where the streets are paved with gold. When we all get to heaven, when we all see Jesus. What a day of rejoicing that will be. We're going to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to shout. My trouble's over. Yeah, yeah. I've been through the storm and rain, but guess what, y'all? I made it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been toiling all night long, but guess what? I made it. We've been made endure for a night, but guess what, y'all? Joy, oh joy, is coming in the morning. Say yeah, say yeah. Ain't he all right? Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
We thank you, O oh God, for your word. Father, there are often times we're disappointed by life circumstances, by people who have made promises to us, by the things that we thought. But thank you, O oh God, that we can find trust in you. Father, when we take our rest in you, when we have reverence for who you really are, when, oh God, we receive a revelation, we can count on our reward. Help us not to focus on the material blessings, but the spiritual lesson that you're trying to teach us. Because we reverence you for who we are, you are. I understand who I am and I understand the responsibility. Thank you for using us as the bait. The truth of the matter, some of us smell like rotten bait on the end of the hook. But thank you for transformation. Thank you for the transforming power of your word. That we will be an attractive piece to those that are seeking the Savior. We ask now, oh God, that we don't allow disappointment to discourage us, to defeat us. But we will walk in our destiny. And our destiny is to live a life of peace and favor in your presence. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your word that has accomplished what it has set out to accomplish. We pray if there's somebody under the sound of my voice that does not have a relationship or somebody that is seeking a place where they can be planted in order to grow into the spiritually mature individuals that you have called us to, caused us, called us to grow into. Bless us right now, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God for those of you who tuned in with us by way of Facebook, who will watch us later on on our YouTube channel. We pray something was said to challenge you, to cause you to want to live a life of worship to God. God is counting on all of us to be the magnets in the world, to attract people to a risen Savior. Thank you for those who dub us as your Facebook church, those who send your gifts, the comments, the blessings, the calls. We love you. If you're looking for a church home, contact us at one of our uh, ways of telephone. Our church number is 219-949-2225. You can email us. You can Facebook us. You can come visit our church at 3140 West 21st Avenue right here in Gary, Indiana. Our Bible study will resume, and I hope to see you at one of our midweek services. And remember on this week, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. Put your hands together. Good afternoon in Revelation. My name is Damian Lee, your news anchor with your NRNBC News for the week. The tribe of Reuben would like the entire church to join them today for their birthday dinner celebration immediately following worship service. The Dorcas Circle would like to meet with all members today in the choir stand following worship service. If anyone is interested in being a part of the Dorcas Circle, you're also welcome to attend. Please keep in mind that Bible study will resume this week on Tuesday at 11 a.m and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Teachers meeting is on Wednesday at 6 p.m. At this time, we would like to recognize five members who are celebrating birthdays this week. The New Revelation family would like to wish Sister Delcia McAllister. <laughs> Sister Josie Burse. Happy birthday! Sister Jean Denham. <laughs> Sister Jayla Turner. Happy birthday! And Sister Sharon Hurston. A very happy birthday. If you're celebrating an anniversary or birthday this month, the month of February, and you have not had your picture taken, please see Brenda English today. Let us continue to pray and offer our support to the sick, the shut-in, their caregivers, the bereaved, our youth, and those in prison. This concludes all the NRNBC news for the week, but stay tuned for we have a very special presentation from the 
tribe of Reuben, and also the professional healthcare ministry. If you're watching and would like to contact or visit New Revelation, we're located at 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana. The phone number is 219-949-2225. We would love to have you join us on Sundays. Our Sunday Bible Institute starts at 9.30 a.m. and worship service starts at 11 a.m. May you have a wonderful and safe week. And remember, don't let the day make a difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. Take care and we will see you next time. The Benevolent Offering.